When you hear the word serotonin, you probably think of mood or happiness or antidepressants, but here's something surprising. About 90% of all the serotonin in your body is made in the gut, not the brain. That doesn't mean your gut makes you happy in the same way your brain does, but it does mean that your digestive system plays a huge role in your emotional and physical well-being. And your gut microbiome, which is the trillions of bacteria living in your intestines, has a major say in how much serotonin your body actually produces. So today we're exploring how serotonin really works and what role your microbiome plays in that and why taking care of your gut may be one of the best things you can do for your mental health. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wangen, the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center. Last week, I spoke about how the gut and the brain communicate and how it's a two-way street, not just a one-way street. But I didn't get into the details of how serotonin ends up in your gut. So let's do that now. Serotonin isn't just a feel-good chemical. In the gut, it's actually a regulatory signal produced mostly by specialized intestinal cells called enterochromaffin cells. In your digestive system, serotonin helps control gut motility, which is how quickly food moves through your intestinal tract. It helps regulate enzyme secretion and fluid balance. It helps signal discomfort or fullness to the brain. It helps coordinate communication between the gut and the nervous system. So while gut serotonin doesn't directly control mood, it affects digestion and inflammation and communication with the brain, all of which influence how you feel. So does the microbiome make serotonin? Now this is where things get really interesting because the gut microbiome itself produces only a small amount of serotonin directly. It probably less than 5% of your body's total serotonin. Now certain bacteria, including also candida, but streptococcus and Escherichia and enterococcus can make a little serotonin on their own. But the bigger role of the microbiome is that it acts like a control system for serotonin production. So gut bacteria send chemical signals to your intestinal cells, essentially telling them how much serotonin to make. And a landmark study from Caltech in 2015 found that mice raised without any gut bacteria produced about 60% less serotonin in their intestines than normal mice. And when healthy bacteria were reintroduced to those mice, serotonin production returned to normal levels. So even though bacteria aren't producing most of the serotonin themselves, they're responsible for turning on your body's serotonin factory. So what's this gut-brain serotonin connection? Well, serotonin produced in the gut cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So it doesn't directly raise serotonin levels in the brain, but it still communicates with the brain in other powerful ways, especially through the vagus nerve, which connects the two systems. So through this communication, gut serotonin can influence things like stress sensitivity, appetite and cravings, mood regulation, and anxiety and sleep cycles. Now an imbalanced microbiome, which we often call dysbiosis, can disrupt the signaling. And the result can be things like poor digestion and inflammation and mood changes such as anxiety or brain fog. And I see this a lot in patients, in my digestive patients. So in other words, your gut doesn't produce happiness directly, but it does help determine how your brain experiences it. Now, what affects serotonin production in the gut? Well, several factors influence how well your gut produces and regulates serotonin. Number one, microbiome health. 
So dysbiosis, so too many harmful microbes or too few beneficial ones can interfere with serotonin signaling. And you can have that measured. You can measure those bacteria. Number two, diet. So fiber rich foods and probiotics and prebiotics feed the bacteria that support serotonin regulation. All right, and fermented foods can also help maintain this balance. Number three, inflammation. So chronic inflammation in the gut can reduce serotonin synthesis. And number four, lifestyle. So things like poor sleep and chronic stress and lack of exercise all affect serotonin indirectly by changing the gut environment. If you want to support both your digestion and your mental health, start by optimizing your gut environment. And here's how. Identify and address underlying gut imbalances in the microbiome. This one is huge and I see it make literally a ton of difference in how my patients feel. I see this every day. They tell me, wow, I feel so much happier about everything because they feel better, right? And because we change their gut environment. All right. Eat a diverse diet rich in plants and fiber and fermented foods to nurture the gut microbes, right? To help everything stay healthy down there. Also manage stress with things like breath work and meditation and yoga and sound healing and all these things that you can do to keep this gut brain access calm. And of course, get consistent sleep and movement, which both enhance your gut motility and your serotonin signaling. And when you care for your gut, you're also supporting your brain's resilience and clarity and stability. Now, serotonin may be known as the happiness molecule, but most of it is made right inside your gut. Your microbiome helps control how much you produce, how it's released, and how well your brain receives the message. So if you want better digestion and calmer moods and clearer thinking, don't just focus on the brain. Start with the gut, because when your gut is healthy, your entire nervous system works better. And if you need help doing that, give us a call at the IBS Treatment Center. That's what we do. And distance is not an obstacle. We've been working with patients all over the world via telemedicine since 2005, and we can help you too. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more insight into your health. Thank you for watching, and remember to always take good care of your body. It's the only place that you have to live. Thank you for watching. We create informative videos like this weekly. So if you enjoyed it, please help our channel by sharing a screenshot or the link to the video on Facebook or Instagram or your favorite social media. And be sure to tag me wherever you post and let me know what you liked about the video and what topics you'd like me to discuss in the future. If you visit our website at ibsstreamingcenter.com, we're currently offering a free ebook on how to beat IBS, so be sure to check that out. It's time to take control of your digestive problems and get your life back. I'd also appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel here, like this video, and leave a comment or question below. I'll do my best to read and respond to all of them. Thank you, and until next time. Well, we'll try this again. Here's the lighting and the sound hopefully is playing properly. So guess what? So, so today, my office was 85 degrees because the heating cooling system doesn't work right half the time. Uh, it's down to 77. So it's doing a little better. <laughs> so, but you don't see me sweating, do you? All right. All right, here we go.